As the brother said, I was a belay, the brother gave a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> I took Shahada in 91. Um, it was after uh, having an out of body experience when I was 17. Um, I seen the light, I was spoken to. Um, uh, seen heaven, seen hell, and was told what I would get if I didn't stop certain things. This was when I was 17. Uh, right before that, uh, uh, it was crazy that my mama, she had told me, she like, uh, I was 17, she was just telling me, uh, she like, you know, you might, you might end up being a preacher or something one day. I'm like, who, me? I was too, I was too much trying to be fly and trying to be a rapper and trying to be all this other stuff. I wasn't thinking about being a preacher. But this was something that came out of my mama mouth before I had my other body experience. And so, you know, they say mama's no. And so, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me to Islam. You know, after my other body experience, I started searching for the truth. And um, I went back to church first after my other body experience, but what happened to me in my out of body experience and me, my experience in the church was way two different things. I didn't, I didn't feel, I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel the statue. I couldn't feel it. Was, it was not real compared to what I had seen. So, uh, I now at that time I was presented with the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. Now this was in 1991. Before the movie came out, before the big fad, uh, I was presented the book of Autobiography of Malcolm X. And uh, as I read it, you know, I couldn't put it down. I think I read the book in like three or four days. And that book's like 700 pages, you know. And once I started reading, I couldn't put it, I couldn't put it down, you know. Uh, and then anyone who's read the book, I would, I would recommend reading the book rather than watching the movie. You know, the book was always better than the movie. The movie was boo-boo compared to the book. Um, this, the author of the book was Alex Haley, and he's the same person that wrote the autobiography, um, autobiography of Michael Max. He's the same one that wrote Roots. So if you get Roots and you get the autobiography of Michael Max, you, it, it starts going into the history and talked about how you know we were Muslims before we were brought here, uh, about West Africa, about Gambia, what the Mandinka warrior, what that really is, is not just a... a, a, a a stereotype of, of African Americans, Mandinka, but Mandinkas were, Mandinka warriors were uh, Muslim warriors. This is what I found out, that they were Muslim warriors. And I also found out about Timbuktu. Timbuktu was a Muslim empire in Mali, West Africa. And it was odd because when I found out about Timbuktu, then I remembered in the cartoons, this is what they used to make fun of, you know, in, in the, uh, the Bugs Bunny movie, so all the way to Timbuktu, you know, and they were making fun of Timbuktu. They were also making fun of the Muslims in the cartoon. Salami, salami, ah, salami. They would always have them in the desert and making fun of the Muslims. But when you become aware, you become awake, then you understand what's being done to you. So we've been systematically uh, programmed from an early age to hate Islam, hate Timbuktu, to hate Muslims, all of this. So, Alhamdulillah, um, Islam, uh, I had a lot of uh, those, I believe in it myself, inferiority complex. Before I became Muslim, I had an inferiority, in, inferior, in, uh, inferiority complex, thinking that I was inferior based on my color, based on my race. Because this is the, if you're not Muslim, if you don't have knowledge of self, you don't know who you are, you don't know why you're here, everything around you is just racist, racism, 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 then you don't have really a, a lot of hope. You know, because you're like, well, what is my life all about? So this is where I was at at the age of 17, and so I was like, man, if this is my life, you know, this is, man, this is it, then I die, that's it, that's, that's not, I don't think that's fair, you know? And uh, so that's when I had my out-of-body experience. And alhamdulillah, uh, after reading that book, the, autobi the autobiography of Malcolm X, 
And it's, it's you read the book, it's like I was living his life as I was going through the book. You know, some of the stuff that he did, I did, you know, and all of that. And I'm like, man, that's me. You know, I'm like, really? He went to prison, you know, and uh, that was before I went to prison, though. I didn't go to prison yet, man. But uh, everything he pretty much did, I did. You know, with the prison, the things he was doing, and I went to, he went to jail for like eight years. I went for, I went for like 11. You know? And um, and just reading his story and how he changed his life, and then how he was willing to put his life on the line for the truth to, to help his people, yes. to, to speak the truth, and to be an advocate of the truth after being lied to for so long. This was okay. something that I said, uh, it was a it was a very mm -hmm. very beautiful example of a man, and I said, if I go, then I'm gonna die like that. You know, if I if I die, then I'm gonna die like that. I'm gonna go out like that for the truth, not for no, uh, not for the game, not for selling no drugs. No, I'm not trying to die for none of that. And if I'm gonna die for anything, it's gonna be for the truth, like Malcolm X did. So, after I read the book, I already made a conscious decision that I was gonna be Muslim. I didn't know how to become Muslim. But I always I'm telling everybody, man, I'm supposed to become Muslim, I'm supposed to become Muslim. And uh, alhamdulillah, we got on the phone with some of my friends there. So and so, he's Muslim. This was somebody that was hanging with us. And uh, I'm like, man, he can't be Muslim because he's doing the same things we're doing. We're drinking and smoking. And how is he Muslim? This ain't what I read. You know, ain't from what I read. Nah, he's Muslim. He's from Egypt. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, I called my friend. I don't want to say his name. But I called my friend and uh, I'm like, yeah. I, I heard you want to become Muslim. I'm like, yeah, man, I want to become Muslim. I already been in my mind. He's like, well, I'm like, well, what do I do? He's like, well, go over there across the street from Fresno State. You know, go over there. I said, oh, that Buddhist temple? He said, no, nah, no, nah, it's called a mosque. It's called, you know, but a Buddhist temple. That's all I know. So he said, no, nah, it's called a mosque. Let's go over there, you know. And I said, well, do I got to wear a certain thing? You know, do I wear anything? You know, do I do? He said, no, just come as you are. Just don't wear no gold. They don't like gold. So, all right. So, the first day, the first time I walked up in the mosque, it was on a Friday, and it was during Ramadan. I didn't even know it was Ramadan, but it was during Ramadan, Friday and Ramadan. I walked up, the first day was the Adhan. First day was the Adhan, that blew my mind. I don't know what he's saying, but I felt it, you know, like, like I was melting, you know. You know, just, just hearing the Adhan. And then the prayer, just seeing everybody in sync, and, Formation and uniform, I'm like man, all these different colors in one building, you know, not not a black church, not a Mexican church, not an Asian church, but it's a a church where or a facility where everybody different colors, everybody's here, you know, and all praying to the same God, saying Allah Akbar, bearing with it that there's no God but Allah, and praying the same way. I said this has to be the truth, you know, this has to be. And so, Alhamdulillah, after they finished the prayers. One of the brothers, uh, Abdul Amin, and there was another brother named Salman, you know, they gave us Shahada, you know, gave us Shahada. And um, Alhamdulillah, uh, they gave us the opportunity to, um, told me to pick a name. And so we had the, the 99 names on the wall. And so, like, pick one of these names, you know, to, to be one of your names, you know. But the Sunnah is, whatever name you pick, you have to inculcate those characteristics into your life. You know, so I started going through the names. I, I saw the name Protector and Defender. So I said, well, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be Protector and Defender of the Truth. Since I've been lied to all my life, you know, I'm going to be one who protects and defends the truth. So I said, well, what's this name? And he said, well, that's Wali. So I chose the name Wali to be a Protector. And I chose the name to be a Protector and Defender of the Truth. So that's why I chose the name Wali. And so, from that that moment until uh, until now, you know, I've been uh, uh, trying to be a Wali to the best of my ability. Like I brother said, I went through some shaitan. He's a cold piece of work. The more the more you believe, the more he'll, he'll test you, he'll throw things at you. And um, you know, alhamdulillah, I had I had the opportunity to learn from some good brothers. A lot of brothers, a lot of people don't know who I learned from. Uh, I learned from a brother named Salam Morgan. I learned from him, I learned Tajweed from him, I learned uh, recitation of the Quran, I learned Tafsir, I learned methodology of Hadith, I learned Fiqh, I learned Tawheed. Um, there's another brother named Shakr, 
he lives in Malaysia now. This brother taught me methodologies of hadith. He used to come to my house and teach me hadith personally to sit down with me in my house. He teaches in Malaysia right now. He teaches English in Malaysia. Um, but the majority of the teaching was the brother Salah Morgan, as far as tafsir, uh, fiqh, um, tajweed of the Quran, uh, tawheed. I learned the, the brother who taught me how to read Arabic was Caucasian. The brother who taught me how to read Arabic wasn't even Arab. He was Caucasian. But he had his Islamic degree in Saudi. He had uh, went for 11 years and got his Islamic degree. Both of the brothers that taught me had their Islamic degrees at, in Saudi Arabia. Both of the brothers. And so, um, alhamdulillah, um, Allah, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah blessed me to, to learn from some good brothers. And it wasn't even until that I got incarcerated that I really realized how much I had learned. You know, because I'm as you learn it, you think everybody's learning just like you. Like everybody knows this. Doesn't everybody know this? Everybody gets the run. Because we were all learning together, you know. And so it was just easy. But it wasn't until I went to, to prison, like the brother said, you know, I had backslid, I had came back from overseas. And uh, you know, uh, you know, you, you you go overseas, you know, it's a culture shock. You know, you, you see certain things that you see true Islam, you come back to this field and it's like it, it messes you up. You know, I don't know if anybody understands what I'm talking about. But um, you, go over, you go and see certain things and you see true Islam being implemented. You see uh, the true uh, struggle of the deen. You see people really getting persecuted for this deen. And then you come back to a society where people are playing with the deen. It, it does something to you because you're still turned up from seeing things overseas, you come back here, it's like, now you're just supposed to calm down. No, no. So, um, Shaitan, you know, he is very tricky. You know, he uses different things. And if you don't have experience in certain things, he'll hit you this way because you never, you don't know how to deal with certain things. And that's how he did me. He hit me with certain things from going overseas and coming back. I, this is my first time going overseas, my first time experiencing certain things having certain feelings, no one in my family is Muslim, so I'm dealing with certain things by myself. And uh, when you deal with certain things by yourself, you make mistakes. You know, you think you know certain things, and uh, Allah shows you that you ain't really learned nothing yet. And uh, this deen, like Allah says in the Quran, he said, don't say that you believe, but say that you, don't say that you uh, believe, but say that you submitted, right? For you haven't been tested yet. And the only one that can um, who manifest whether you believe or not in this deen is Allah. You know, you can say you believe all you want, but faith is manifested by being tested and passing certain tests or uh, humbling yourself and understanding that you don't know nothing. The wise man is the one who knows that he knows not. He knows nothing. And um, I can admit, you know, with certain knowledge, you get knowledge and you get ahead of yourself. You know, I was, like I said, I was, one of the, I was, I was the best student in my, my uh in my teacher class, I can say that because I got a paper that he said this. That's why I can say it. I'm not just making it up. And uh, I was the best student in the class. I had memorized the most Quran. I think I had learned Jews Amma. I had learned Jews Amma. I was only like 20, 21, 22. You know, learned all of uh, Jews Amma at a young age, real quick. And um, Shaitan, he'll work with you. You know, he'll work with you and uh, he'll, he'll trip you upside down and then let you know that you're really nothing. You know? So, um, learned a lot of uh, humbling. I learned a lot of uh, learning how to be humble. You know, going to prison. Like I said, I went for 11 years. You know, I had uh, I had backslid, and really it was a, it was a test because um, what it taught me was that regardless of whatever it is that you go through, never never leave the congregation. Whatever problems you're going through. Never leave the congregation, never leave the jama'ah, never leave the community, never think that you can take on something by yourself. <coughs> Even though you may be going through things and there's people around you that are doing certain things that you don't like, don't allow Shaitan to whisper to you and say, well, look, they're doing all this, well, don't, don't go over there no more, don't hang around over there, stop going to the masjid. <coughs> this is from Shaitan. You know, the best place to be is in the masjid to stay there and endure it and, and go ahead and endure it out. So this is something that I learned now. Instead of running from certain things that you deal with them head on and just keep persevering and keep, keep striving, it'll get better. 
But if you take off before you even learn, you know, you, you've never uh, obtained uh, true belief or true iman. You know, you never passed the test. But, but, um, but alhamdulillah, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here uh, to, to have the opportunity to share whatever it is that I've learned, my, my experience. You know, the Prophet Muhammad said, wisdom comes with experience. And so, uh, you know, I just thank Allah for making me go through certain things. You know, I didn't, I didn't like it when I was going through it, but I appreciate it now, the things that I went through, because it, it gave me a lot of wisdom, it gave me a lot of uh, understanding, you know, so. But uh, I'm just happy that you guys are here to, uh, to uh, take whatever knowledge I can give you and share with you that Allah gave me. And uh, that's going to be my job, to give you whatever it is that I know. Whatever it is that I know that I can I can share with you that I feel that you can benefit from, it's my job to just give it to you. I don't even want it. You know, take it and be better than me. Share it with somebody so they can be better than me or be better than you. You know, because that's the intent to each one, each one to share this thing. You know, and again, I know, thank you guys, all of you, for coming. This is the first wave of, of students. We've been, like I said, we tried this class many times before. I think this is like two years. Been, I've been at this match for two years. We don't try. This is the first time we done went all the way through the the quarter, you know, to where we had a test and people were going passing with the, with the, the certificates. This is the first time, you know. So inshallah, uh, you guys will be the example, you know, of, of of the other students to come afterwards. You know, we got the salat class next. Inshallah, we have a bigger class in the salat class than we had in the tawhid class. The salat class will be fun. Uh, I think the sister was saying to learn the whole uh, Salat in Arabic. When you finish the Salat class, you will know the whole Salat in Arabic. We're going to learn the Tashahid, everything in Arabic. Um, at the end of the class, we'll have a, a test. Where you have to go through the Salat and say everything out loud in Arabic. You know, what do you say in this position? We have to learn the names of the positions. You know, this is Kenya, this is Ruku, this is Sajda, this is... You know, Jamsa, this is, you know, we're going to learn all the positions. What do we say in these positions? Okay? And um, I, I recommend or I advise or I encourage you to have as many people come next Sunday because that's when we're going to start the Salat class as well as when we're going to start back the, the, uh, the Arabic class too. It's not hard. The Arabic class is not hard. I guarantee you three months. You give me three months straight and you'll be reading. Three months. It's not hard. The only person that makes it hard is ourselves. If you take it upon yourself to take the alphabet, take it overnight, study it, take the vowels, study it, you know, just like with anything, start doing it. It's, it's all on us. How much you put in it, that's what's going to get out of you. Okay? Yeah. Just share with you how, I'm going to share with you how I learned. When I started learning, I, I worked the graveyard shift. I was a security guard. I worked the graveyard shift from 11 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning. All I had to do was sit in my car and watch this building. So all I did was put the tape in all night and just read and follow. Listen to Abu Basi. Okay? You follow, see how long he holds it, how he do this. And that's what I did. While people were sleeping, I was up learning Quran. So it wasn't like I just woke up one day and just... I just got it overnight. You know, I put I put in work because I wanted it. The first time I heard it, I said, I'm, "I need that. I need to get that. I'm gonna get that." So it's not hard. Three months, you could be reading. Six months, you could be reading with Taj Weed with no problem. You know, start memorizing your own surahs and everything because you have the rules. Inshallah. Okay.